Oh my God, he's huge. Whoa. Yes, indeed. Is this your first time for it? It is. That's a TV red me too. What? Good job. Got Terry Maber here. If you want to do some crappie fishing, you need to come talk to Terry up there, right? That's right. <laughs> I'll take you out. Top Dog Crappie. Barflies the channel. Top Dog is the guide service. T-O-P-D-A-W-G. So when I catch some big old crappie, I call them dogs. Them some dogs. Yeah, well, we're going to go for some uh, flats fishing down here. It's a little different than what yeah, Sabine right. and Dallas, isn't it? It's different. I yeah. don't know what to expect exactly. So I'm used to fishing that muddy Louisiana water. So right. Uh, to see what or fishing like. lakes in Dallas. Yeah, lakes in Dallas. East Texas. East Texas. Just got off Toledo Bend last weekend. So yeah. yeah. We're gonna go super skinny. Taking the tarpon 140 and taking the the Mamma Jammer, the Prowler 15, the ultimate coastal bend boat. See if we can find and get in some trouble. Would I use these boats in Louisiana? No. Would I use them in Florida? No. But here, they shine, and it's just like a pair of shoes. I would not, if it's raining outside, I'm not going to go put my running shoes on. I'm going to put my rubber boots on. Because the wind is so bad, we're not going to be using Terry's autopilot today. It's Old Town. We're going to get feet on the ground and sit down low in these old paddle gacks. Since Terry's staying with me in the Copano Cabana, we have some time to scout the evening before. Ready to go, man. How's it, how to sleep in here? It's good. It's cold? Yeah, it's comfy. Oh yeah, feels good. I turned it up a little bit. Feels good. It came back on, so it must be pretty warm outside. This is humid. Oh, you got this blowing in here? Yeah, just pushing them. Smart. Humidifier. Yeah, I keep a humidifier with me all the time. So. Nice. What's this? It's just a little uh, cooler. It's a cool water. That's yeah. cool, man. Oh, your old trick, boiled eggs. Boiled eggs. I, I made a breakfast sandwich. You want? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's cool. I drink these body armors because they're high pH. I like the uh, mouth on them. The bigger mouth opening. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's easier to drink out of them. Especially if you're on like rough water or whatever. I drink the. Uh, yeah, this is the water. Mm -hmm. I drink the body armor light, like the yeah, the drinks. Drink. Yeah. yeah, I like those. Wind's blowing this morning, so we're gonna have to hide. I'm still undecided. I've just been grilling through my brain, like where to go. Uh, we have a low tide this morning. That's not necessarily good, right? Low tide. It's not bad. It's just it changes things, like where you can go. We've got enough water, I think, with with this spot. I'm thinking of. We can get behind this island and we can fish this way and the wind's coming this way. That'll so work. We can stay behind it and we can creep behind it for long ways. Yeah. And uh, two feet on the ground, hard bottom, turtle breast bottom. Never uh, done it that way, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of bu uh, buddies that come down here from Dallas that, uh, that actually use this up there. Like oh. they'll go to Texoma and get on a protected bank. Mm -hmm. And turn side saddle, feet on the ground on a windy day. And yeah. Crab walk the bank and throw out into the lake. That's cool. Yeah. So it's a cool technique, you know. All right, yeah. let's get after it. Terry needs a waterproof bag. Boom! Oh, here we go. All right, we're ready. All right, Terry. Got Terry's waterproof bag. Let's go fishing, people. We lost a paddle coming down the road. We gotta find it. We're about to have to go all the way home. Oh, right there, right there, right there, right there. <laughs> ah, sweet. That just saved us. All right. That just saved us to drive all the way. Man, that's an expensive water, people. Ah, dog. Man, I can't believe it's right here at the launch spot. I thought for sure it got sucked out. 
on top of the bridge or something. Yeah, that was lucky. We just almost had to drive all the way back to the house. You get another paddle? That's a haul. Yeah, that'd have taken us, a, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Now we're right here, man. All right, this is a good sign. We're going to catch a monster today. Ready to hit this wind, Terry? No. No? Hey, we're going to hide. I'm going to show you how to beat the wind. All right. We're going to beat the wind today. The first key to beating the wind is sitting on the ground and having two feet on the ground as much as possible. That's the first rule. That's why I got these boats right here and not two pro angler 14s. Skinny kayaks, guys, we're gonna paddle, we're gonna sit low, we're gonna stay wet, and we are gonna go fast. And that's one thing about these kayaks is they go fast. Now, if you feel unstable sitting on that thing, that cushion, just take it out. Just put it underneath your calves. And there's a, you want to put that pad where the, the sweet spot is to where it's it's comfy, the seat's not in your way, yeah, gotcha. right? So I got total control. I got the wind in my back. I could spin the boat this way. I could spin the boat this way, but the wind's kind of always at my back. Yeah. And I'm going to use the wind now to launch these plugs twice as far as you normally would. So in this environment, if we had old towns or if we had Hobies even, it would have been a struggle with the wind in, yeah. a, in 10 inches of water yeah. for a half a mile. Being in a native for 10 years and then an old town now, a little skeptical when you first see them, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna drown. <laughs> <laughs> but then when you get out there, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, they're, you're in two foot of water or less most of the time, you're, you know, you're able to move very fast those boats are quick and then they sit so low to the water that your crab walk technique works really well so it's almost a must have in in this in this environment so oh he came off i didn't set it first cast oh first cast nice first man cast, guys come on now you can't complain about that 30 miles out buddy <laughs> Junior. there you go just keep throwing it it's working just first. keep throwing it I'm gonna get that one. He's coming back for it. I hooked him though. I had yeah. him for a minute though. So. See the soft bottom? My first instinct is to dig the toes in and pivot. Yeah. You know? I got surprised on that one. Yeah, hell yeah. I was expecting to hit it on the first throw. So Terry lost a trout on that first spot behind that oyster reef. Now it's time to go across the flat, and the flat is about nine or ten inches deep for miles. So instead of working our way into the wind by paddling, why not just walk, feel the bottom, look for fish, and look for some low spots? We need a bit more water to find some fish. I think two foot is the sweet spot. So the wind was really bad, and we just, it was maybe 10 inches deep. So I said, screw it, let's just walk. So we started walking, and we're walking by other kayakers that are trying to paddle into the wind in big fat kayaks with elevated seats, and we just walk right by them. After a little while, they got the hint and they started getting out and walking their own kayaks after they saw us doing it. But it was it was a lot easier. I mean, it wouldn't have been too bad to paddle, but why wear yourself out when you don't have to? You know, we just walk them and we you know walk along that edge and found that deeper water and it was just funny. Windy day, too windy to paddle. We're gonna walk it. So once we got in the back of this one cove because we were at low tide, I didn't think about it, but it was actually a critical spot because everything else was 10 inches, it was 24 inches. And that really made the difference, right? And there was a, some sandy potholes. Our knees, or we were deeper in the water. There we go. In the deep hole, huh, Terry? 
Hey, that's a good fish, man. He's almost legal. That's super dangerous, man. Yeah. Now look, watch. Tip I was giving Terry here was to not bow the rod by lifting the body weight of the fish because it creates a slingshot and then trout come unhooked all the time and then that's going to sling the plug right into you, into your head, into your hand. Not a good situation. You know, you don't want this going on because it'll slingshot that plug right up in your hand because they, they come off, right? Done that. And I had to dig it out with wires. Right. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah, you never want that 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 bow situation. Yeah, so much it's like under load, just ready to go off. Like yeah, you live and learn on that one. I've been hooked a few times doing that. Anyway, let's get this fish over to the kayaks and get a measurement on him. He's a pretty good trout. Terry had his back to the wind and he's throwing a Spook Junior in Chrome, 20, 30 mile an hour sustained winds nonstop. I don't know, it's a good fish though. It's a Mo Better fish. I don't know what we got here, bro. I know, that's what I said. I don't know what you got. That's like a red. It's a red. I saw some bronze. Keep it, I'll eat them. Oh, yeah, it's a red. That's what I said. You gotta wear him. You gotta wear him. I don't know him. if he'll make slot, but he's nice. He followed me all the way in. Did he? Yeah. I, that's what he did while I go. Yeah, probably the same one. There's a bunch of them out here. That's a pretty fish. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty fish. We, ju we just had to find that uh, he's just on there. I think this fish is going to be close. Let's walk him back to the kayaks. By the way, that white nine foot fiberglass stakeout pole, I kicked on the flat in about 10 inches of water. It was just laying there. I thought it was PVC, picked it up. I think this will work just fine as a stakeout for my boat. I just love that top water explosion, man. There's nothing like it. Where's your 20 mark? I think that's it right there. Right there? What's it? This is 15, 16, 17, 18. 19. There's 20. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Put it back up there? That's why it's so big. You can pinch them down, look. That's, that makes them legal. Oh, I gotta get the lip right on the line. He's legal. Is he? Yeah. I got, I got no Terry likes that meat. So yeah. that that's what makes it different, dude. That's what makes them different. I might you might have just sold me. Oh wow. At least no. We just put a stainless one. I mean, you can get whatever, but you can hook it anywhere. Right. But the key is that that get, that right. gizmo is wicked. Yeah, and when you put your fish on, pull it off, spike your fish to the bottom lip. And you stick them back on. Do they make them a different length? Oh, you can change the length? No, they come at 8, 10, 20 foot. Because I need, I, this is how I want it that long. That's 8 foot. No, I want like 4. 4? Four, I want this long. I think this is the shortest one, but you can, what you do is you just Cut pull, that. pull this out. That's what happened. So I, I usually sling them up in the back until I get there and I put them back in. But, but that's cool, you can adjust it. Yeah. So this is the 8 footer? 8 footer. Okay. Stinky pants fishing. Let's do it. That's that's a cool contraption he's got. It's just a stringer clip. I've never seen that. That's a new thing for him. I he, use that for. He designed uh, that. Yeah. Well, I think I think they make the same clip for uh, trot line hooks for catfish. It hooks on a trot line the same similar way. That stinky pants stringer was pretty impressive, man. I really dug how that clip worked. Might have to get one. I think I'm sold. 
blowing probably steady 22 to 28 or something like all day nonstop. It actually got worse as the day went on. As the day went on. There we go. That is a five inch fish bites jerk bait. A simple thing like a six inch slight change in water or a go to a chrome top water versus a white or and you went to a weedless uh, jerk bait and it and it changed. We weedless. Another flute. Yeah, it's gotta be. Look at it. He's running way out. No. Can't be, huh? That looks like a trout just now. Is it? I can't it tell. Like one. Oh, water's clear, man. Where's he going, dude? Oh, that's red. <laughs> Where's he going, Terry? I can't control him. Here. That's my dinner. Don't lose it. He's he's about like that other one. Yeah. This fish was giving me a run for my money, but finding this two foot depth was critical. It's the only deep spot we've walked into since we've been out here. Good thing Terry brought his bump board, measuring board, because this fish was right on the line. When they're that close, I don't trust my magic markers on the edge of the kayak deal. He's over legal. Terry switched over to a Slayer three and a half inch paddle tail and he's starting to slay them. And there it is, the Slayer ink. Looks like about three and a half inch with gold and a chartreuse tail. It started producing right away. That's a trout, huh? Yeah, I think so. What you throwing? The same downside. I mean, that's layering. Oh, nice. This one feels a little bit better. I don't think it's keeper, but it's a little bit better. So the bite's getting better as we get this later. Be the third. I missed one on camera, guys, a while ago. I didn't know. Dude, that's a good it. trout. Is a good one? Oh, that's a good Dude, that's, that's a, a keeper. keeper. Yeah, man, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. All right, let's get that one in. This is definitely a keeper trout if I can just fling him into the footwell of this boat. He's bouncing out. He don't want to get it. Get in there, man. He's a bouncy sucker. There he is right in the channel. Good job, bro. Yeah. Terry sure was excited about this legal trout, man. He was wanting to take some fish back to Dallas. Gotta tell y'all, I'm really loving this stinky pants stringer thing, man. It's pretty cool. Center gravity, oh, yeah. down low. Kind of keeps from, keeps your body from turning into a sail. Right. Yeah. Last thing you want is being up high. Yeah, that's, that's nice. It was it was great. A lot of people don't think about this till it's too late, but I made sure that we worked into the wind all day, walked into the wind, paddled into the wind. And when it came time to come home after we were exhausted, we just sat side saddle and we just drifted with the wind and just enjoyed coming back to the truck, right? It's pretty nice, right? 
Just an enjoyable drift. We actually caught some pretty nice fish on that drift back. Yeah. I mean, it gave us a, probably a mile and a half of uh, open water flats with potholes and grass flat to, to, to just cast on. We just sat there and fan casted downwind as we as we drifted and picked up. My, you picked up your biggest red and I picked up my biggest trout coming in that way. At this point, you're at your most tired. It's the end of the day. And it's the most awesome time to just have Mother Nature Troll Motor just kind of take you back to the truck. Had we been working with the wind all morning, we'd have been at our most tired and we'd have had to come into the wind to get back and we would have been hating life. You only do that one time and you'll never do it again. Terry's actually a, a crappie guide in North Texas out of the DFW area. If you ever want to do any crappie fishing uh, on the DFW lakes within an hour of town, sometimes he goes further, make sure you hit him up. Yeah, I mean, I'll go pretty much anywhere in North and Northeast and East Texas. I'll, I'll move, you know, I was on Toledo Bend the other day. I was on Palestine uh, the week before. I'm going to be on Somerville uh, next week and I fish Texoma. So that's that's a several hundred mile radius. And then we can meet halfway. I've met several clients from Houston on the Brazos. Crappie Master even pours his own baits too, man. I wouldn't mind coming down to Conroe or even uh, uh, Livingston and doing some down there. So mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not too much of a haul if you live in this area, you know. Wind or no wind, it was a great time on the water with Terry. We kept it low, kept it slow, and two feet on the ground, and we just made the wind work for us instead of working against the wind. What a cool idea, man. This thing, that actually grabs anywhere. It grabs that cable anywhere, dude. I thought it was just on the end. It literally grabs up and down the cable. Insane.